Let's start with the highest level evidence that we have, a meta-analysis of randomized clinical controlled trials, looking at saturated fat versus polyunsaturated fats and the risk of having a cardiovascular event. So remember I said a meta-analysis allows you to pull these trials together. So there's a Cochrane review, um, 2020 by Hooper, that conducted this meta-analysis. And they showed that when you're swapping calories from saturated fat for polyunsaturated fats, you reduce your risk of having a cardiovascular event by 20, 21%. So that's really important evidence. You know, we, we, we cannot deny that. That's actual health outcomes, which is what people are most concerned with. And then that finding is corroborated by long-term large-scale observational studies, particularly studies out of Harvard like the uh, health professionals follow-up study, the Nurses Health 1 and 2 studies. They've looked specifically at this question and also shown there that substituting calories from saturated fat for polyunsaturated fats significantly lowers cardiovascular disease risk. To your point, people often make all sorts of claims about seed oils and polyunsaturated fats in general. And a lot of this seems to go back to a kind of naturalistic fallacy. You know, they'll show how seed oils are made and say, therefore, it's bad. I think that that's interesting, but I always come back to the data. What are, what are the actual studies showing us? And you know, sometimes people will, will use that to say, you know, these oils are inflammatory, they're obesogenic, um, they cause insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. These are the kind of claims that people would make. But the evidence is the opposite. It's contrary to that. You know, if anything, people that are eating or have more linoleic acid in their diet, so linoleic acid is the primary omega-6 found in seed oils. And it's the primary polyunsaturated fat that we would consume in our diet. And that in those clinical trials that I mentioned, that meta-analysis by Hooper, most of those trials where they're comparing saturated fat to polyunsaturated fat, most of those polyunsaturated fat diets are rich in linoleic acid. Um, we ha now have really interesting long-term observational studies that not only look at what's Andre eating over time and calculating how much linoleic acid's in that diet and then looking at health outcomes, but also taking samples of your blood and fat cells. And so we can look at how much linoleic acid is, is in circulation and is in your adipose tissue. It gives us a bit more, a high degree of confidence that what you're reporting on your food frequency questionnaire is accurate. You know, it's, it's, hard, it's hard for someone to uh, affect their blood chemistry, right? It gives us a pretty good window into what they're actually doing. Mm -hmm. And in these studies, you see that people who have more linoleic acid in circulation and in their fat cells, they actually have lower risk of cardiovascular disease and they have lower risk of total mortality. They're living longer. So I think that's, that's hard evidence for us to kind of deny. So I'm certainly not in the camp of creating fear around seed oils. I don't think that we need to do that. I've seen some people go as far as saying, you know, they're, they're the reason for the ob obesity kind of epidemic, mm -hmm. which I just, I find staggering. You know, yes, they're found in ultra processed foods, right. but ultra processed foods uh, have a number of different characteristics or components that could lend themselves to being over consumed. They're low in protein, they're low in fiber, they're low in water, they contain artificial sweeteners and colorings and flavorings. They're very calorically dense. They're hyper palatable. There's so many different explanations there for why people would not be satiated and be over consuming those foods. It's hard to kind of just pin it on linoleic acid. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the best evidence we have suggests that linoleic acid is actually healthy. It's an essential fat. Our body can't make it and, and needs it, which is important to remind people. Um, but then, you know, I'm not, paid by big seed oil. I'm also not here to tell people to go and drink seed oils because <laughs> they are very calorically dense and you know, most people are trying to lose or maintain their weight and oils in general are not really great for that. Oh. Um, in terms of what I would recommend people cook with, personally, I use olive oil. I like the fact that it's rich in polyphenols. Um, so 
you know, I think you can use some of that. I would use it sparingly and you know, just be conscious that it's calorically very dense. Thank you.